The equations for our split cable analysis can be found in 4.1, Cable Analysis, in the EIA Bridge Binder, Volume 2. Here, we will briefly go through a refresher of our assumptions from the basic design course and the nomenclature we will use to label cable forces. First, I'll start with the nomenclature, and I've drawn out an example here below. <clears throat> PT low hand back. The various subscripts are as follows. T refers to the force direction. This value can be T, H, or V, depending on if the force is in line with the cable, so T for tension, or horizontal or vertical. Low can be high or low, referring to the side of the river of interest, the low or high side. Hand can be either hand or walk, referring to the handrail or walkway cable. And finally, main can be main or back, referring to the main span between the towers or the backstay between the tower and the anchor. Next, we'll take our variable alpha from the basic design course and split this into an alpha hand and an alpha walk to represent the fact that our handrail and walkway cables are at different angles. In the basic course, we took alpha to be our worst case scenario, the alpha hand, the steepest angle. And also a quick, quick note before uh, I go into how to use these specifically is that the main span geometry of the handrail and walkway cables are always going to be the same. Therefore, the cable forces along the main span are equivalent and no change is necessary. Differences just appear when we look into the backstay. So in the backstay, or in the basic course, we take PT back as what we'll now be calling PT hand back because we are using the worst case alpha of the handrail cable. However, after splitting cable forces, we have a PT hand back and a PT walk back. Because the alpha for the walkway cable will always be less than the alpha for the handrail cable, the PT walk back value will always be less than PT hand back. Now, I've drawn this out for you in a uh, small abutment diagram here, as well as um, a few more, few more equation rules to show you um, when you're referring to this and just remind you which, which uh, value to be using. Now let's get started with an example. Consider a 40 meter bridge with a maximum delta H of 1.6 meters that uses the two tier or 2G40A abutment on either side. Using the tier one calculations taught in the basic design course, what would you get for the factor of safety for uplift on the high side? Now, depending on your fill and ramp wall calculation method, your answer should have been somewhere between 1.15 and 1.3 without splitting the cable forces. Now at this point, you should be asking yourself, I thought this was a standard drawing. Shouldn't this work 100% of the time? Well, this is because the standard drawings do need to consider these split cable forces to work or for the design checks to check out. Now in the same problem as above, with only splitting the cables, I get a factor of safety of 1.6 on the high side anchor uplift calculation. Now this is much higher and is a passing value and we'll refer to this as uh, sharpening the pencil on our calculations. So we're not exactly doing anything from a construction or design point to get extra capacity, but we are digging into the assumptions we made in the basic design course so that we can sharpen the pencil and kind of realize that extra capacity with a more technically challenging uh, calculation. Now, when we discuss splitting the cable force vectors, this will affect the majority of our structural systems in the suspended bridge, namely the cable analysis, tower analysis, foundation and anchor analysis, and construction analysis subsystems. It's important to build this into your design tool for tier two calculations. And another thing I'll recommend that I'll discuss a little bit later in future lectures, to set yourself up for success, is to break these calculations into a live load contribution and a dead load contribu contribution. So you can perform these checks using LRFD. They will be discussed in individual sections, but for example, you would split the dead and live load contributions and then combine them together to find your ultimate loading using the ASC7 load combinations. <clears throat> 